So the question of open to all, um, which leads us into this whole conversation around principle one of the seven cooperative principles, uh, voluntary and open membership. I think to think about a voluntary and open membership, you have to really begin to think about the entire set of principles. They all really work together. So to talk about the first one is really to talk about all of them. And then the principles also are um, the codification of values um, that I think the founders of uh, co-ops really wanted to get across the uh, ideas around democracy and self-help. Um, are all very, very important. One of the things that is very important, at least to me and the people that I tend to work with the most, which are African-American people and uh, indigenous people and people of color, is to really see themselves in the story. So when you say voluntary, or when we say voluntary, we're making an assumption that people know something about what they are being voluntarily invited into. And I have found that generally people are not as aware of cooperatives as we might think they should be or that they actually are. Many people don't know that the products that they buy already in their homes, like Ocean Spray or Sunkiss or Land O'Lakes are already co-ops and they're participating in these co-ops, but they have no idea. They just get a great product. They like it. They like the marketing. They like the people on it or whatever it is they like about it. And they are participating in a co-op. So what we've done is really not help people understand how important cooperatives are to our general economy and to our local economy and definitely individually to us. And so what I would say is that in order to expand this conversation around voluntary and open membership, we have to talk about education, which is also one of the cooperative principles. So how are we talking to people, with people, about their role in cooperatives, even the history of cooperatives? One of the things that has been most useful is being able to use the work of Dr. Jessica gordon Nimhart and um, Collective Courage, um, because really understanding the history of economic development as it is tied to the freedom movement of African-American people is really very important. I'm not volunteering for anything that is not about my liberation. And so really casting um, the voluntary net a little bit wider to be talking about the justice part of um, being able to volunteer. Being able to volunteer is really very important. The perception of open is really just that. What may be open to one, pe one person may be definitely close to another. For example, if someone is not as able-bodied as another person, then they may not be able to navigate the physical structure that would allow them to act, get access to a building or get access to a car or access to airplanes. Even though it's open and you can walk in it, you can get in it, but if you're not walking, you can't get in it. So these two pieces around voluntary and open membership really have to be deeply unpacked and they have to be unpacked with communities in order for them to get the meaning out of it that makes sense to them. Now, I was told a story about the history of cooperatives and I'm laughing because it's not so much that was funny, but it was um, right under everyone's nose and I think people just sort of missed it. And so I read a lot, so I've just probably mentioned two books, so I'm gonna mention one more, and the other one is called Storefront Revolution uh, by Craig Cox. And it talks about the history of the co-op wars in Minneapolis. Fascinating story. There was one line in the book that I skipped and or missed, and I ended up coming back to it. And it was describing, um, the founder of the Bryant Neighborhood Cooperative, Mo Burton, comma, African American. And I breezed past that pretty quickly, looking for the history of African Americans in Minneapolis. And it dawned on me a page and a half later that Mo Burton was African American. And that um, this other person, Theo, was also African American. And both of them had relationships to the civil rights movement through CORE and through the Black Panther Party. But I had not been told that story in the two or three years that I had already worked at a co-op. 
I was told that the Rockdale pioneers were pretty much the they codified the 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 principles, and that's great, that's fine, that's true, and that's it. It was a completely white narrative absent of any person of color. And you know, when you see the picture of the um, of the pioneers, there aren't even any women in the picture. So it's absent women, it's absent people of color. But as I started to really unravel that and ask people questions about, well, who is Mo Burton? Who is this Theo person? And where is everybody else in the history of cooperatives? I found out that there is indeed a opportunity for me to become a part of cooperatives because they are a part of my own um, historical framework. They're a part of my life and they are a huge part of the movement toward economic freedom for African-Americans in the United States. And I'm saying all that to say is just to really prove the point that education is really key and critical to understanding how to make the co-op more open. So I'll, close this by talking about one more thing, which is how people see the co-op, who they see in the co-op, what represents the co-op is what people will believe the co-op is about. If your marketing is all either young white people, 18 to 25, or fruit and vegetables, then that's it. That's what people will think about your co-op. It's for young white people and they only eat fruits and vegetables. If you want to be more open and you want to help people understand that there's, there's really a voluntary nature to it. Volu the voluntary nature comes in from being inspired to become a part of this. You're going to have to figure out how to make people see themselves in that co-op and how to tap into that inspiration to really say, yes, me too. I really wanna learn more about this. I really wanna be a part of it. Some of the people that we love to hate are really great at making sure that black, indigenous people of color are part of their business model. You know, I'd love to pick on some people. I'm gonna say McDonald's. You all can edit that out if you want. <laughs> but McDonald's has got a fantastic way of making us think that one, they're the best food in the world to eat, and that they are for everybody. They have ads in Spanish, they have ads in English, they have food that is specific to the countries and communities where they have franchises. They make sure that their advertising is as inclusive. Some people might say, oh, they're pandering to different communities. Yeah, they are, but they are also very clear that they can't afford to alienate, alienate any sector of the, of the market. So they, they cast the net pretty wide and they do a pretty good job of it. And yeah, they have a lot of money, but you know what? Money isn't always everything. So we have community. And that's what we forget, is that co-ops can sink so deeply in community because they're a part of the community. But all we have to do is really look around and tell a better story to make sure that people feel inspired to volunteer, to come to our co-ops and play with us around economic development and the future of fair, just access to food.